back to the Chicago Tomahawk. I'm Mike. I got my line mate Matt with me. And today we're going to go over the Blacks' loss to the Predators, 4-3. to three, And uh, we're going to go over some NHL news. And, you know, something that I heard about Derek King, about him being a coach in his system, but we'll get into that in, in, uh, a, little, in a little bit later. Lincoln and struggles continue. And you know what? Um, it, it, it's, it's become very evident that this kid needed more time in net uh, during the season, and he did not get it. Uh, but there's nothing that we can do now. He's going to ride out the, the rest of the season, and you know we'll take it next year where maybe we could set him up to have a battle for the starting position next year between him and maybe, hopefully, maybe three other candidates coming into camp uh, looking to make an impact. So we'll, you know, we'll take it, uh, you know, we'll take it as, as it goes with Lankin. And I'm trying not to get too discouraged over him, considering, you know, kind of the situation that he's been in this year. But uh, but it's very easy to get to get uh, discouraged over him. Uh, Kaner gives a death stare to a fan after his goal. It was freaking awesome because he scored it, yeah. skated over to the right side and just looked at him. This dude didn't know what to do. <laughs> did did you see happened. that guy? <laughs> yeah. If he could have crawled yeah. the walls, he would have, man. He smiled, though. Yeah, he after. did. Yeah, he, yeah he did. Maybe he was giving him a hard time in, like, warm-ups or something, and yeah, he heard him, and he's like, what now? You know? Like, yeah, you he's do? like, oh, I'm going to score a goal. I'm going to come yeah. right back to this motherfucker right here. Mm. So um, I thought that was really cool. Reichel uh, got his first career point, which is great. He, he's he been playing pretty good, man. Um, he hasn't been pressing. I think I wouldn't say that he's nervous, but I think that being on, on, on the big club, you know, he's definitely not trying to step on anybody's shoes. So Matt, what's your opinion on that? You've got a, you got a pretty talented young kid. He's, uh, he's a little nervous, you know, cause he's, you know, playing with these men, you know, the probably most talented hockey players he's ever played with in his career. And he's not, he, he's afraid to kind of step on people's toes. What kind of advice do you give to a kid like that? I, I would just say take it in, man. Just get some game experience because it's a different, different ball game from the AHL. Like he, like right. look at his numbers; he's tearing it up. Just get like that experience. You know, you're playing against the elite. You're not playing against young guys. You're, you know, like over the hill types of guys that are just trying to stay alive in the hockey. But yeah, just do the best you can. Work on your game, and next training camp come out flying maybe put on a couple pounds i like to see him bulk up a little bit he kind of he's been getting hit a little bit i don't know if you've seen the last game against nashville he took a pretty good hit but he got back up you know i i know it doesn't matter because look at the Brinkat. yeah he's a little guy he gets hit he gets right back up he's, he's like a, a badger plug. though yeah he for sure but i think uh reichel i'd like to see him gain a little more weight get a little stronger and just start getting some confidence this is when you build it up spin is strong try to get that first goal I'm glad he got that first point because I'm sure he's been, it's been weighing on him. Like, oh, dude, I'm all these games played. I got nothing. Right. So, and it was a nice, nice little setup. Nice play. I think he gave it to uh, Jake McCabe. Had a nice little uh, stop and start right on the, the, the sideboards. And he gave McCabe a beautiful pass and he buried it. Yeah, I'll be honest with you, man. I like Reichel. I think that I if he too. if he gets his confidence, like you said, a couple pounds on him, I think that he'll be great. Uh, Kaner, I don't I don't know if you saw the game prior to the Predators, but uh, Kaner actually came in to stick up for uh, for Reichel. Oh, oh yeah, 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 I did. Yeah, somebody was giving him a hard time, and Kaner came in, gave him a little bit of a cross check, and told him to get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, he's the old guy now. He's yeah. got to take care of the young guys. So that's yeah. what they did for him. All those players oh, used to yeah. do it for him all the time. Yeah, they did. He was he was so small at the time. You remember that? I just like remember his first game. His first well, it was maybe it was the first game of it was what was it? Um, two thousand eight. He yep. was playing against the Red Wings, dude. I think Chris he was oh seven oh eight. Yeah, Chelios just beat the shit out of him the whole game like cross checks and just extra wax and i'm like is someone gonna do anything for this kid i mean he's a kid yeah and i and that's why as part of me i i hate chris chelios too just because he's just a dirty prick but <laughs> not denying how good of a defenseman he was right. he was a beast but uh yeah it's good to see kaner sticking up for that kid he probably sees a lot of him in him you know just a highly you know touted prospect like the next guy, the next wave to come in and yeah, maybe sees a little bit of him in him, you know? 
Yeah, coming into the big league and being yeah. undersized. You know, Chris Chelios, man, I, I think that he's a product of the era that he played in, you know. It's and punch and grab, yep. And, and obviously at, because uh, when did he come in, like mid-80s or late-80s? Yeah, 80s? Montreal Canadiens. He yeah, won the Canadiens. He with them that year, didn't he? His it, rookie year, maybe, that's, or maybe a couple years? That's different hockey, man. You know, oh, that's man. that's brutal. And, and he's not a big guy either. No, he's and he not. He was just a mean dude. And yeah. He, you know what? He's the guy, like, they always say, yeah, I hate him. I can't stand him. But if he was on my team, I'd love him. Right. One of those types of guys. And that's what he was for the Hawks all those years. You really think about it. He was kind of like an undersized uh, Scott Stevens. Yeah, <laughs> a little Scott Stevens. Uh, and he, he feared nobody. Chelly, yeah, Chelly he did not fear nobody, man. He would go up against... Uh, the biggest guys. He yeah. Wasn't, he wasn't afraid of him at all. He was a great defenseman. Uh, he but was. He put up some good numbers in his day, too. Yeah, he did. Well, I thought that I, I, I would Hawks. definitely say that his like his niche was defending, though. You know, I, I think he really evolved like he his he was supposed to be like the shutdown mean dude. And then he started like with like, I noticed with the Hawks, man, he put up some great numbers. He yeah. would step in the play kind of like a Duncan Keith. Right. Score some big goals. But. What Duncan Keith didn't do was, you know, he wouldn't, he couldn't really shut down a game like Chelios could with right. his partner. I think Chelly was always paired up with Gary Suter. Yeah, he was. And they, that was a great pairing because they were both like the same mean. They could skate it up on you, make you pay, and, or they could just play defense the whole game and make you pay. That's so, he, dude, he was very underrated. I just, I can't like him. I apologize <laughs> to everybody listening. I cannot like him. I think, uh, I think Suter had a bit of it, a harder shot. And I think that Suter was a better skater too. For sure, yeah. He he was more like the the Brian Campbell type of yeah, guy. Yeah, yeah. And and uh, Chelios was kind of like a like a hybrid of um, of Duncan Keith and Steve. I think like Victor Hedman, Probably just a more, smaller, meaner Victor yeah. Hedman. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So moving on to Coach King, and there's something that I read earlier. Um, you know, Matt's got some notes here about Coach King shouldn't be returning. You know, the team has played terrible since the trade deadline, and most guys have checked out, and it's really disappointing. And I, I, I agree, but I read this past week that Coach King did was told not to change the system that was in play. So essentially, the Blackhawks were playing with Jeremy Colladin's broken system uh, from the, from from the beginning, and King essentially did what he could to to try to salvage this. And you know what? It couldn't happen, but we will say this, a guy with no previous, no previous NHL experience so far, you know, he's got about, I think 25 wins on a broken system that he didn't, that's not his design. Um, you know, you kind of have to tip your hat and to at your hat to him because, um, he walked into a very bad situation. And this he's the second coach that this has happened to, Colladin being the first, walked into a really actually probably a worse situation than Colladin. And yeah. I don't think that he's really gotten the fair shake to see what he's essentially capable of. You know, th- he wasn't brought in, you know, earlier, you know, prior to the season, said, Hey, look, you're gonna have all off season to prepare for the next season. You can work with the GM about getting the players that you want forming your own system and having some off-season time with uh, some players to try to get to know them and um, and maybe get some information out to them so they can start training and studying the new system. And he wasn't given that. He was essentially said, hey, here, here's, here's, a, here's a system, a broken system that doesn't work. We want you to continue with it because, you know, that's what they wanted to do. And um, let's see what you can do, essentially. Yeah. Kind of thrown to the wolves. Make Matt, it work. Yeah. <laughs> do you think that, obviously, that's not fair. Do you think that we can honestly give a fair assessment to Derek King, knowing that, you know, that he wasn't giving given a fair chance? Well, if those reports are true, no, that's that's definitely not fair. It's almost like, hey, do you want to be the coach of the Hawks? But you got to play the way we want you to play. It's not fair. Like, if you hired, let's just say you hire Tortorella, we know our team's going to be a defensive-minded team. And right. Torts, Torts will never take the job. It's like, are you kidding me? You want me to take your one-in-nine team and do the same thing? Oh, and This is not working. Yeah, exactly. Um, I just, I you, we got to give King credit, though, because he brought out the best in Dylan Strom. Yeah. Dylan Strom. Me and you have been very hard on him for the past two seasons, but he deserved it. And 
part of me is now like, well, wait a minute. Now this coach has given him a chance. Like he can obviously see something that Colleton didn't see. And Dylan Strom is he's played his way up to a first line center on this team. We were hoping he would would have been that last season. I was hoping he, so, we would have gotten a bag of pucks for him this year. Exactly. We were at the beginning of the season, like we're, we were hearing in healthy scratch, healthy scratch, Dylan, Dylan Strom on the trade block. And Derek King's like, no, I, I need this guy. I, I, if I want to be successful, I need him in the lineup. And I, I give King credit that on that. But um, I, I, I think that this was an interim type, interim type thing. So I, I think King deep down knows that it's, it's not going to work out for him. It's just, Probably something cool for him to say, hey, I was a head coach in the NHL. Maybe somebody else will give me a look. Maybe not. Or maybe I can take over another AHL club. But, yeah, it's def- if those reports are true, man, that's definitely not fair. It's almost like you said, you're, you're set up to fail. And if you, you succeed, it's like you look like a genius. But how, how the odds aren't good on that. You know what, man? I'm a... I'm a um... I'm like, look, I I, I want to give you a fair shot to see what you can do, because I think you give you get a reputation. You know, if you, you know, you bring in some guy, you throw him out to the wolves, you know, other coaches are going to be like, hey, I don't know if I want to I don't know if I want to play for this club. You know, I don't want I don't know if I want to coach for this club, you know, sit on the bench for this club. Yeah, it's a big red flag if you're coming in. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. I thought it, I, I determined how we play. Right, <laughs> like, right. That's why you hired me, you know. You know, and to Davidson's yeah. credit, you know, maybe he's like, look, I don't see this being the future. And, you know, it's like, okay, well, that is your choice to make. You know, you are the new GM. This is the direction that you want to go in. No, I don't agree with just sending this guy out to pasture where he was set up to fail the whole time. That's not how I do things, you know? No. Uh, but if you really think about it, why would they, you know, I, they would, a lot of things were just done wrong this whole season, the way that they, the way that they did things. And maybe they were trying to give the, the guys a reason to play something to play for so that it's not a dead season by, you know, November, essentially how it was for Arizona. Yeah, and, they botched a lot, man. Like you said, I mean, I would have hired a GM at the beginning. Yeah, I, obviously, if they knew Stan Bowman was going to be, you know, have have an issue with all the Kyle Beach stuff, like why would you even bring him back? Why would you even give him the credit card to sign like you know guys and bring his team in to kind of reload? I'm happy with the Seth Jones trade. I'm not going to get into that, but yeah. there was other things like Jake McCabe. That's a lot of money for a guy. You know, if you're rebuilding, but I, I like him too. Uh, and then they botched Pat Foley, I think. Oh, but let the God. guy let the guy finish the season. Come on, really? Or communicate it, you know, because just really, he, yeah, he was, he's been quoted as saying, "I can't do an 82 game season. It's just too much for me," you know. And yeah. if if that's the case, then you need to tell the fans, like, "Hey, look, Pat's looking to retire. He can't do every because they didn't say anything about it." No. You know, they didn't it's say anything like, about it. The they guy. just said, "Hey, yeah. Pat's retiring. We're gonna have a uh, we're gonna have a carousal a carousal of 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 people coming in to, to cover for it." And a lot of people didn't like that. If they would have communicated that to the fans, the fans probably would have been understanding of Pat and said, "Okay, you know, for this guy, we're gonna turn up for his games." And yeah. um, and, but and and as for Davidson, like they weren't gonna name a GM right? until after the season. But I'm glad that they named him because, like I was saying, you want the GM to have a head start at the trade deadline, at least. Like, right? He pulled off a miracle, I think, with the Hagel trade, considering I, I the mean, time that he had. I, that was a miracle trade for him, and he it's going to definitely help. I mean, I know they're higher draft picks, but for it's not going to hurt the Lightning, and it's going to help us, even if it's later. We need the best amount of talent we can get at one draft. And I think next year it's going to be really good because we're probably going to be bad again. So we're going to have a higher pick and then we're going to have Tampa's pick. And what if Tampa, you you never know, man. What if they hit an injury bug? What if Vasilevsky gets hurt and they finish terrible? We're going to, we got a better chance for another higher pick. So you you just never know. But I think Davidson really did well with that. And to jump kind of out of the subject here, I thought Chris Foster's did a pretty decent job his first official game with yeah. uh, the Predators. I, I didn't mind him. I thought he had some good goal calls. He said one thing that kind of 
made me think a little bit. He goes, and Saros takes one off the breastplate. And I'm just like, the breastplate? What the hell is that? <laughs> what is this? Uh, what is that's this? Uh, old, medieval the, times? <laughs> yeah, that's the only thing I didn't like. And I kind of was scratching my head a little bit. I'm like, the breastplate? Just what about the chest? <laughs> you know, just something like that. Yeah. Takes one off the pads or something. But right. But I thought he did a good job. But like you said, the... I, I think they botched a lot of stuff this year, and hopefully next year as everything's set in stone. We got a new coach with a training camp, and his staff is new. Maybe some new scouts. So let's just get it all set up and not do it during the season. Let's get it done before. Right. That's all I ask. Yeah, you know, Davidson was set up to, to you know set up in a bad position. King was set up in a bad position. Vosters is set up in a no win position. You know, <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it, it's 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 brutal, man. You know, just all the way down. Really, next season is going to be a fresh start for a lot of people. And you know what, man, this could be a fresh start that some of these players need too. You know, um, with everything going on, everything going around, you can barely believe what the, probably what they hear out on the ice. You know. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's too bad about King. We'll see, you know, what they're going to do with him. If they're going to keep him around, I don't know. But, you know, we'll take it from there. So, Blackhawks going to take on the Flames. A solid team. Johnny Hockey's got 105 points. Is this the first time he's broken 105? First time he's, yeah, for the, for 100, the 100 point plateau, okay. yes. Yeah. Career playing year for uh, I'm sorry, career playing year for him and a contract year too, brother. Contract so, year, of course. Oh. Well, are we surprised? You know, no, well, that's uh, that's what happens. Let's see if he hits 80 yeah. points next year. Hey, comes back down to earth. It's pretty impressive. You like with the Sutter defensive minded, solid yeah. defensive team. He's got guys. He he has three potential guys that can get 100 points this year. Right. That's amazing, man. That's yeah. amazing. That's just he brings out the best in his players. I'll tell you that. It's crazy because he, you're right. Sutter does play a defensive-minded system, and these guys are thriving offensively in a system. So uh, yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I'm down for it, man. I'm down for it. Uh, yeah, Larkin I'm on the gets, wagon. L- Larkin gets surgery and is shut down for the rest of the year. What surgery did he have to have? I think he tore a, a, a meniscus. I, oh, I, I think so. Stevie Y got the surgery. I believe he got it today, and he obviously he's done for the year, and right. he should be ready before the the season starts. Wow. He was having a great year, man. Yeah, he, was he was probably my second best fantasy player. I think he had uh, 70 points. And uh, I know a lot of Red Wings fans were saying, well, you might as well drop uh, Bertuzzi and the Re- Mace, or Lucas Raymond because Larkin was the reason why they were really playing, you know, putting up good numbers this season. Yeah. That's how important he is. So he gets, uh, what is uh, Bertuzzi's uh, performance like after Larkin going down? Yeah, who knows? I love that guy's game, man. He's gritty. Uh, he's he's got like thirty something goals. I think he's about fifty points for a guy like the, the kind of like an Andrew Shaw, maybe a little bit better offensively. Yeah. He's had a good season, man. A really good season. Did Shaw's he ever put up twenty? I think he did one year. Okay. I think he did the year we uh, twenty thirteen maybe. Wow. I think he did. Okay. Freddie Anderson is hurt. He'll be reevaluated next week. If it's serious, the Canes should be very concerned. Nothing against Nancy Rana, but it's a lot. It's a, he's not in the same league as Freddie Anderson. Could this have come at a worse time for the Canes? Yeah, uh, that's that's terrible news. He's put up like a Vesna like uh, series or a Vesna like season this uh, year, and oh man, and he's got a bad reputation with uh, his playoff performance. So yeah. you want him 100% going into game one because it's going to be against a good team. It's crazy, Because he's set in stone. Yeah. Absolutely crazy that this happens right now to this guy. I, I hope it's not serious, and if it isn't, you clinched. You got a spot. You're probably going to finish one or two. Shut him down, man. Shut him down and get him as much rest as he's going he's gonna to need because it's going to be a long grind if this team's going for it, and they got the team to go for it. Yeah. If he's at fifty percent, he's. I mean, he's he's going to be more of a liability, though. Yeah, you you got to play Ranta then because he, you're just gonna you're gonna aggravate an injury and then you're in big trouble. Well, luckily Ranta can play. Yeah, so, he's not bad. Uh, he's just he's just not at that level. I right. think he's he could steal you some games, but I don't think he's ever really got that chance to right. be a, a starting playoff type of goalie. 
So this, um, the Oilers, Mike Smith, among NHL's three stars of the week, seems to be getting hot right at the right time for the Oilers. They are going to be trying to steamroll their way into the playoffs, and uh, hopefully they don't <laughs> peak right before the playoffs hit, you know. So yeah. we'll see with that team, man. We're all hard on them. We We're, are. Uh, the whole hockey world was hard on the Oilers goaltending, and it's that's a big big deal, I guess, if you're the, the guy everyone's been harping on is uh, one of the three stars of the week. He's obviously, um, you know, he's probably got a big chip on his shoulder trying to prove everybody wrong because, you know, he's reading articles and hearing all these things. He's like, oh, no, I'm still good. I could play. I know he's a, probably a prideful guy. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to see him do good, but uh, I don't. I just, I'm not, I just don't like the, I, I don't know how, the, with the management of the Oilers. I just don't understand it. When, you know, it, it's kind of not fair to him, too. Like, what the Hawks did to King, it's like, come on, you're going to put a 40-year-old goalie that's had injury issues, groin issues, and you want him to ride you to the Stanley Cup final? I mean, it, come on, it's, I know you got the two best players in the world, but goaltending is huge in the playoffs. Right. So, I mean, it's almost like he was kind of set up to fail, too, in my opinion. But yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully he proves people wrong. But I just don't see him getting out uh, getting out of the Pacific when the the Flames are in. You know, Ken Holland, aren't you? I'm kind of surprised he still has a job, to be honest with you. Yeah, you know what? In Detroit, they were very, very hard on their goaltending. I remember Chris Osgood had a bad season. He lost his net. They signed Hashik back. He had a good season, had some, you know, hard times. Osgood got his net back. And remember they had Manny Legacy? Oh, yeah, that's right. He was putting up an unbelievable season. I think he had like 40-something wins, lost in the first round. They blamed him, not not the rest of the team. They traded. I, I think he went to the Blues, actually, the next year. And I'm like, what? why are you getting rid of these young goalies? And, yeah. you know, you're bringing Osgood back. You're bringing Hashik back. And he he was very tough on his goaltending, and it seems like he's more laid back with his goaltending now <laughs> with the Oilers. And it's like flip-flopped. It's like, no, right. this is the time you need to be hard on your goalies because they, they were horrible last playoff. Right. So I, I don't know. Maybe something flipped. He's getting old, and he's just, uh, yeah, it is what it is. I got McDavid and Dreisaitl. They'll get me through the well, No, they won't. They haven't yet. So right. They better figure something out. You can't go into the playoffs with just two dudes, you know. You need like a complete team from from the top all the way down. You know what? The Evander Kane signing makes him look good because he's been good there. But he's Evander Kane's the total d bag. Yeah, and uh, I I don't know. You know what? We need to talk about the Ryan Hartman thing. Oh Did yeah, when he flipped him off and his wife or his ex wife. <laughs> what's his name? Evander Kane's ex wife. So she donated money. Yeah, yeah, man. So what's his name? Uh, Ryan Hartman and Evander Kane got into a little scuffle. They're you know cussing at each other. Uh, Hartman got a fine for giving Evander Kane the bird, and Evander Kane's ex wife Venmoed. <laughs> Venmo Ryan Hartman yeah. uh, 200 yeah. bucks uh, for his fine uh, which is hilarious man what a troll to your ex-husband do you know what Oof, I mean that's rough and I think uh, he put up like $40,000 and he donated it to kids charities or something which was even better he turned something in some something on, a bad on ice gesture and made something good out of it but I mean Hart- Hartman said hey Hart- I did appreciate that? Yeah, he okay. goes, I appreciate all the money coming in. It's awesome. But you know what? I'm going to pay the fine myself, and I'm going to donate all this money to a charity, which, wow. was, which was cool. He's having a great year, too. Oh, yeah. I think he's putting up some big goals this year. He's playing with Kaprizov, so you know that's helping. But that that was cool. It was good to see uh, Evander Kane kind of take one in the mouth. <laughs> You know, it, it's when I think of Hartman, which I liked him as a player, you know. But yeah, me too. I, you know, when I when I look at him, you know, it's like, what other gritty, talented right wings are out there that are centermen? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Because centers are really, really hard to get. Obviously, like who who out there can can be transitioned into a center? And, uh, you know, they tried to get Kaner to say, play second line center for about a year, and nope. that didn't work. I mean, Kaner can play that area of the ice, but uh, he's better, you know, yeah, quarterbacking too much, from right too wing. Too much yeah. responsibility for Kane. Yeah. He's just got to focus on scoring goals, not, you know, picking up that man in the slot. Right, the, right. The defenseman's chasing or what whatnot. But right. I think Kaner is just a one-dimensional guy. Nothing wrong with it. You, yeah. you need him. 
But what? yeah, two way solid gritty sandpaper center. They're very hard to find. His uh his two way game has gotten much better. You know, obviously we talked about it last year, and I still think that last he's... year was way better. Yeah, I thought last year he was. You know, he I think he should have had the C on him last year. That's how how important he was on our team. He was yeah. playing defense, also like back checking, and he's still you know, doing it, man. Yeah, he's doing it, but it's. I think that uh, he's really pushing offensively, though, to. to yeah, to, well, to we, we have no choice. Right. Yeah, he's probably like, hey, all right, I got Strom and I got Debrinket. We got to score as much as we can because right. no one else is really scoring. So. So the East playoff teams are set. We're just waiting to see the matchups. The West has a wild card race, though, on the other hand. Should be an exciting finish. D- Dallas, Nashville, Vegas, and the Nucks are hanging by a thread. Matt, Dallas. And Vegas are two teams, man, that, you know, it's like they're scraping to get in there, but you got to ask yourself why, you know, why are you, you know, I'm obviously, you know, I know why you're going to try and push to get into the playoffs, but I don't see Dallas having any, any you know, sustained success in the playoffs this year. I don't think that they have the squad to do it. Vegas, uh, you know, to be honest with you, I think Mark Stone is, is just a bad check away from going back on the LTIR. Yeah, what do you think is going to happen with these two teams? Then we'll talk about Nashville and the Knucks after. So, yeah, well, it's, well, it is for the wild card. So we, we do have the teams are all, all actually, to be honest with you, we got Edmonton at 94 points, LA at 90. And then we got Vegas at 87 and Vancouver is probably likely out of it, but you never know. Yeah. But well, the only thing for sure about the Pacific right now is the Flames are in. And I think Edmonton is playing very well. They'll probably get in. Vegas, I think, like you said, they're rushing Stone back. I don't think he's on. I don't even think he's 70%. Yeah. And I I think LA is going to get in. I think they're a good team. But for the wild card, they're going to be competing with Dallas and Nashville. I just think Dallas and Nashville right now are in a different league than Vegas and Vancouver. I don't even think those guys are going to even make it. I think, like we said at the beginning of the year, there's going to be uh, five teams from the Central and three from the Pacific, and I still believe that. Yeah. So who do you think will take the final? T- oh, you know, hold on. Let's talk about Nashville and the Knucks sure. really quick. Uh, Nashville, a 4-3 to three win over the Hawks. That's typical of them. They they typically win, you know, one yeah. goal games. Well, that's last their- night, though, man. Last night they played St. Louis. I watched this game. I had my daughter on me, watched the whole game. I think they lost 9-2. to two. Wow. Saros was terrible. Forgive me. I forgot who the backup was for Nashville. He was worse. And wow. I could not believe when you're this desperate to get in, you lose a game like that against uh, an already clinched St. Louis team. Yeah. It's like, dude, you don't deserve it. I know you had a back-to-back night, and it, but it was the Blackhawks. Come on. The Blackhawks, the Blackhawks are at Hawks the have been playing teams tough, though. I mean, yeah, they, 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 have, they knocked the Sharks out last week. Who would you play in that? Sorrow sort of the backup if you're playing against the Blackhawks, knowing you have a back-to-back with St. Louis the next game. I'd, I'd have the backup. The backup. Exactly. And they played Saros back to back. Dude, that he's human. He's going to get tired. And I think, he, you know, you face a lot, a lot of shots in the game. And it was a close game to the end. It's like, why would you risk that? I just, I know they're desperate, but it's, it's the Hawks. You got to take, you got to get your back up and you got to get Saros some rest because you know he's going to be in pretty much from here and in and out to the playoffs if you have a deep run. That you're just, you're killing the guy. And I think that was a coaching mistake, and I think they they could pay for it because the way Dallas is playing, they're they're winning a lot. They are, yeah, they're winning close games right now too. Um, if I was if I was the if I was in Nashville, I'd have sorrow set a Michigan <laughs> a Michigan winter retreat right now, getting some yeah. rest for about a, maybe a week, a week and a half, and then giving him a week uh, back in to kind of get ready for the playoffs. They, uh, they just don't have a choice because right. they're they they've always been that way. They they look at they did to Pecorine. I think if they would have yeah. managed his games right, he could probably play another two seasons. But they killed him. Could you imagine if he played for the Blackhawks, dude? Pecorini or yeah. Saros? Oh, Pecorini. Pecorini would be playing all 82 just to keep <laughs> us alive. <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, back when he was like back in the day when he was good. Oh, in his prime? Oh, if he yeah. was a Blackhawk goalie? Yeah. Oh, geez. I think, I think we would have won five cups. Yeah. 2010 to 2017, we'd probably win 
All he, the cups. <laughs> he, just like Soros, he was another guy who, you know, that he kept them in it. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 I've always said Crawford was good, but yeah. Crawford couldn't play a lot. If you played him a lot, you could tell he'd get fatigued. He'd give up softies here and there. And I think 2012, they learned a lot with how they treated Crawford. They, they kind of played him a lot. And then the first playoffs uh, series against the, the Yotes, man, they made Crawford look terrible. He, needs, uh, terrible. he needed competition as well. Yeah. Thank God it, for it, Emery. It yeah. brought out it brought out the best in him, like as best a backup. as as a player. Yeah, I agree with that. And Emery was the best backup goalie the Hawks have ever had. Yeah, man. I, you know, I got a love for I got a lot of love for the uh, Belfour Jeff Hackett tandem, man. I really do. <laughs> yeah, Hackett uh, was good. He was. You know what, man? He. he I think that he's a lot better than I think what people remember because he backed up Belfour and then he came in and, and was a starter for a few years. I thought yeah, that he, he was took, good. Yeah. yeah, I mean, Belfour is a top five goalie ever with wins. You know, he's you're not going to play that much, but when you get in and he was still solid. And uh, I know when they traded Belfour to the Sharks, he kind of got the job. Hackett got the job and yeah. got us in the playoffs a couple times. But, yeah. you know, we ran into a very good Colorado team. Yeah. <laughs> then again, who didn't? <laughs> yeah, exactly. So who do you think takes the, the final two wild card spots? Well, I think Dallas will take wild card number one. I think they're just playing too well right now. And Jake Ottinger, very good goalie, been very good for them. Uh, you know, it is, I know I harped on Nashville a lot, but I just think Nashville's going to find a way to squeak in just because of Saros. But, you know, it's kind of like a waste that you're going to go against Colorado, probably. And you're going to get throttled by that team because they're all offense and Nashville's two, two defense. And, you know, it, it, the, off, the top heavy offense is always going to win. You know, I mean, you could see you could see a heartbreaker, but it's very unlikely because Colorado's got three very good lines, got some good defensemen. And we'll see with uh, Darcy Kemper. I mean, we don't know too much about him in the playoffs. He really hasn't been there that much. But I just think uh, Nashville is just going to be too tired. They're in playoff hockey right now. They're fighting for their lives, and Colorado's kind of on coast mode right now. Hey, let's just play our game. No one gets hurt, and you know we're we're ready for the first round. They are on coast mode, but they've got a lot of pressure too. They've got a lot of pressure to they do. They do. To, to to make it deep. I mean, to be honest with you, they have. Do you think that it's cup or bust this year? Oh yeah, you're going to see a lot of changes if they don't win. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think it's going to be Dash, Dallas and Nashville coming in. Dallas seems to be really amping it up right now, getting hot. They're winning close games. Uh, they're down in games and coming back and winning them, uh, it, which is really huge for, uh, for a team looking to make the playoffs. Nashville will bore you to death, and they're going to make it in. And and that's what it's going to be. I, I think the Vegas just... Uh, they're just too banged up right now to do it, and I don't think the Nucks have enough to, uh, to really pressure anybody uh, for that last spot. So I'm going to go with those two. Did Dallas, Dallas, and Nashville. Yes, f- at one and two wild yeah. card one two. Yeah. Yes, I and I think this time of the year, Joe Pavelski really turns his game up. Yeah, he does. So I think hey, he's going to be showing up. He'll probably put in another five goals, couple maybe you know, five assists in these next couple of games, and he's going to get these guys going. And they got Jason Robertson, who's very good. Rupe Hints. And don't forget Jamie Benn and Tyler Sagan. They're, they're still good. You know, they're not like they were a couple of years ago. And then Ad- Alexander Radulov, they got some good players. They, I mean, they just don't get a lot of press, you know, right. like all these other teams. They could surprise you too. I, I think they're probably going to run into probably Calgary, I'm assuming, right? I oh, no, it's so. a division. Oh, wait. Oh. Um, no, I, St. I, Louis, yeah, yeah, because yeah, St. Louis is in the, that number two spot. Number two, it could change though. It could change. I mean, right. they're Minnesota. They're within one point, so we we really don't have a matchup it, with the West yet. It's going to be too hard to see. We we do got um, all the teams that are set in the East, but you know that can change too. But that's going to be interesting because there's going to be some very good teams eliminated in the first round. Yeah, like, that kind of probably Toronto. And yeah, <laughs> that's another cup or bust year because. They're up against the cap, and that's going to be interesting. We'll have to talk about that next podcast because we'll probably get a better, uh, better um, idea of the the matchups coming in East. Yeah, definitely, man. Um, 
let's just really quickly, maybe we'll save this for the next podcast. Who's going to, who's going to dip out first. Who's going to be a surprise team that dips out first. Do us a favor, hit us up on Twitter. Let us know what you think of the upcoming playoffs, who out of the top teams may do a swan dive and dive out of the playoffs first. Be sure to let us know. And uh, that's all that we got for you tonight. Thank you very much for listening. And we're going to catch you on the next one. This is the Tomahawk and we're out of here.